So next, I will be moving to the first session. So for the session one, for ICT and food, for food, and uh, the chair will be uh, Dr. Hadi Abdul from UBD, uh, UBD. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to have this uh, um, sharing this session. Um, our first session is on uh, ICT for food. Yes, um, so this session, I would like to uh, have another photo, photo session first uh, before the start of every session. So please, uh, can you turn on your, your, your camera again? Thank you. Um, as a reminder, uh, each presentation is for 10 minutes and there will be a ten, uh, five minute uh, question and answer session. After the session, if you have any questions, then you can use the raise your hand function in the back. Thank you. Now, uh, to start to begin the, the, the session, uh, may I invite uh, our first speaker, Dr. Trong Min Huang from Post and Te Telecommunication Institute of Technology, Vietnam, with the title of presentation, Agricultural IoT based on uh, edge computing. Excuse me, can, can you see my slide, my presentation? Yeah, we can see your slides. Is that, sir? Is that clear? Yes, yes sir. Yes, thank you, Chairman, very much. Welcome on, on this is my presentation. Uh, I am starting uh, my uh, first presentation in uh, agriculture IoT based on edge computing. My name is Hoang Chong Ming. I come from the PTIT Vietnam. So in uh, this my our proposal, I uh, would like to introduce and uh, some important point in uh, today. In the first, uh, I uh, would like to uh, show and some significant of uh, the study is uh, the motivation of the study. And uh, the second, I uh, try to figure out and some and concrete the objective in uh, our pro proposal. And and the first, uh, I want to talk about the overall of the, our proposal. And in the last, uh, I want to listen and some uh, question and I will answer the question. Wow. Well. Uh, as the first, uh, I would like to introduce uh, in um, certificate of the study. As, as you know, this uh, agriculture IoT system can uh, bring so many benefits uh, for the uh, our life, the life level cost reduction, food security, high quality and high output, and local nature pleasant control. And uh, uh, I want to impress in uh, and uh, some uh, motivation in uh, our proposal is uh, that now we are to face as a COVID break uh, situation. That's now we all want to move and uh, automation as uh, oriented. So, uh, and the second, I would like to introduce and some important from the edge computing or the multiple access the edge computing can contribute the technology on the light uh, our, our day, the light our day. Uh, as you know, as the edge computing is the one of the four technology is contribute in the 5G technology. Uh, and the second is the can to bring in some performance by the improving the performance as a device because the edge computing can bring the control close to the user. And uh, it's the can make and some in quality of infrastructure and and. Uh, uh, and high performance is the network because of in support in the service quality for the collected data stream. Uh, edge computing can be integrated with the, and some uh, heuristic algorithm like the AI is the making intelligent decision. And, uh, and the last is very important in our day. We are have, can uh, want to uh, move and hang security and uh, Air computing can ensure data security and moving to work to digital twin. So, uh, from uh, this situation, we are uh, 
try to figure out and some concrete objective in the, our pro, pro, proposal. That's uh, in the first in the intelligent control aspect. Uh, we want to proposing uh, uh, intelligent computing solution as a as a network for data collection and uh, local response control using state of as uh, smart and edge computing. Uh, in the improve uh, improve security area, uh, we want to win uh, an uh, IoT device security framework based on authentication, data privatization, and encryption. And the last is the uh, in the enhanced performance of the agriculture IoT system. Uh, we want to propose a modern solution, load distribution, and data processing in associated with the crop production and the farming practice. So uh, just now I want to talk about uh, in suppress uh, in uh, our mission in uh, in this proposal. Uh, in, as a first, uh, uh, we are now and still an agriculture system have been impacted by a huge growth of new emerging technology in uh, 5G, AI, and automation. Right now, I uh, I need to uh, say and we are facing with uh, effective local decision making, precision and hand of operated uh, agriculture IoT system. I want to, we want to incorporate of automation actual into IoT system. It will become good for the new normal situation. Just now, we are want to propose an intelligent model for a solution based on novel technique for plate care and disease control. And the second, to uh, moving on in the IoT security framework, uh, as you know, we agriculture system are impacted by massive IoT device system variation and new cheat and distribution control route. So uh, we want to propose a security framework related to IDS based on AI, ML, DL, approach it and uh, D2D authentication schema. And uh, the third the is uh, I want to enhance the performance uh, of agriculture of IoT system. Uh, as you know, agriculture system have a practical even in HML condition. Uh, we need to find uh, and some actual agriculture system as it is required to deal with big data procedure by massive IoT system, uh, my IoT device. I uh, as would find with the increase sensor traffic leading to lack of amount of computation. Uh, we want to propose a novel modern solution to upload tax and reprocessing data. So come to this uh, still current, uh, current system. In the Vietnam indoor, we have and some automatic watering system and Malaysia is my, our collaboration. Uh, we are, have a fertilizer system based on IT system. Uh, in the framework uh, is the current system, the IoT uh, can be to focus in and some control in the user resource status uh, is the module three. Uh, we want to Im implement in this uh, IoT framework uh, in the zero box. Uh, it's the edge computing uh, here and to effective with the product management and effective the security solution and to uh, and to touch on the on the control connection layer uh, by and some smart intelligent control. So. Uh, in overall, in that to uh, working and to uh, reaching the arm, uh, uh, I try to uh, get the collaboration between and uh, uh, some country in Asia. Uh, for at you look in the, my picture in the intelligent control mission, we have and some experience from the NICT from Japan, uh, from Vietnam, from Malaysia, from Thailand. And uh, the security, I uh, uh, we want to analyze uh, is the uh, previous cooperation between the Vietnam, Thailand, Japan in the security framework is come to in the practice uh, as a performance area. We uh, have a co collaboration between the Vietnam, Malaysia, uh, and and last in the other practice we are have a tech back uh, farm. We are we win win parallel tech from uh, Vietnam and Malaysia. Uh, 
and this slide I want to show and some experience is the cooperation between the Vietnam and Japan in the uh, uh, in the security on the data stream uh, and the Thailand we are we are want to talk about and get and some experience from the uh, telecommunication network and the Malaysia and uh, this uh, this is the end uh, of my presentation in this last slide I want to show you and some cooperation between the Vietnam Malaysia Thailand and Japan and uh, some uh, experts that come from the university and in the farming and the company in the farming okay is that so thank you very much thank you for the presentation dr Huang. um may i invite the the, the floor to uh, ask for questions Uh, can I ask a question? Yeah. Please. Please. Okay. Uh, I mean, the, you have three different uh, parts of your project, right? Yeah. Security, control, and uh, modeling. Yeah. Okay. In the security and control, I I think uh, there are several other uh, methodologies already. But in the performance, uh, uh, how long? Hello. How long is actually your project? How long is your project actually planned, uh, Prof Wang? Hello. Uh, uh, you... Sorry. Uh, how please, long? Can you repeat yeah. again? Yeah. Yeah. My, my my question is uh, to the the third part, the performance. Yes. How long is actually your project plan? Is the performance of the IO, uh, agriculture IoT system? No, no. I mean the, the the project is planned for two years or three years or how how long? Ah, oh, I'm, I'm very sorry. Uh, I try to fit in uh, two year, two year. Oh, two year. Yeah. Uh, do you think modeling such a performance is enough uh, in two years? Uh, I think that's a good question because so I have and some previous uh, uh, cooperation. I, I I think we are can be to extend it uh, to uh, reach the Oh, okay, okay, okay. No other question. Yeah. Thank you very much, Prof. Wong. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Well, I have a question here. Can I ask? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, please. Yes, please. I have a question that yeah. you've done some work previously, right? I'm just wondering how much data that you already have from the existing outdoor and indoor so that you can actually build on it. I'm very sorry. Excuse me. I can hear you clearly. Uh, you said that you, this is going to be, you're going to use all the previous work that you have done and then build on to the existing, to the proposed project. How much data you actually collected in order for you to build the model? Oh, I think the data, the data is very important. Uh, that's why you are trying to cooperation between uh, some uh, as much as possible uh, for the country in uh, our project. Uh, uh, this member in uh, in uh, in our in our project is uh, I, I try to get it, but uh, I I I. I Going to expand to to get more data. Okay. So so the thing is, are you going to do an outdoor or indoor data collections for your proposed project? I mean, outdoor or indoor agriculture. Ah, oh, uh, just now we are having some project uh, project parallel uh, in the indoor project. That's okay. Uh, that's fine. But um, the main challenge is that I want to expand it to the outdoor project, the outdoor the scenario. Okay. Oh, that's, that's okay. Okay. Yes, that's good. Right. So, data from the my partner, right? Yeah. I mean, I understand. It's outdoor usually a challenge. Yeah. No other questions. Yes. 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 Thank you very much. I think the big challenge. Can I have a second question, please? Yeah. 
Is yes okay? Okay. Uh, maybe. Uh, yeah. Uh, I have also some project uh, regarding uh, smart agriculture and so on. But uh, during the time 2020, 21, uh, 2021, I had yes. the difficulty to go on because of of the COVID 19 situation. And I knew that uh, in Vietnam at the beginning it was okay, uh, but Uh, recently, it was not okay with the COVID-19. So, uh, how do you cope with this kind of problem? Are you still continuing your project, or did you hold your project a little, a little bit? Yeah. Uh, just now, this is uh, our member in the, my project is uh, open now. This is just uh, uh, idea. I, I want to if you had uh, some experience uh, i want to invite you and uh, is the other people uh, come into our project so your your country is already open yeah for visitors uh, some for, 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 for some guys as, uh, uh, as my bad i know uh, okay 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 thank you prof yes thank you very much Indeed. Are there any questions? Yes, any question? Hi, good morning. Uh, I have a question about um, security aspects. Um, so could you please elaborate on what are the security threats that you inv- and that you in- envision in such agricultural IoT system? So what are the security threats that you are trying to protect against? Uh, <coughs> uh, <yeah>. uh, <laughs> So my security, uh, my my security area is my my main, um, my main researcher. Yeah. But uh, I can hear clear you to ask my question for me. Oh, I was asking about what are the security uh, threats? You no, know, uh, what are the uh, threats in such a system? Yeah. You know, what are you trying to protect against? Yeah. Oh, well, I think uh, for following is uh, the executing uh, manner. I uh, try to make and uh, some uh, framework is localized uh, for the. Uh, that's only this is my project. I uh, forgot about uh, IDF, I uh, intuition defense system. That's the only. Okay, I'm afraid uh, we have to stop. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, we have to stop. Okay, can can you uh, can you give me a question uh, on my email? I'm ready. Yeah, thank you. Okay, You're welcome. Okay. Now, yeah, thank uh, you. Thank you very much. Let's Indeed. move on to our next speaker, Dr. Chai Li Goy from Curtin University, Malaysia, with the title of presentation: Agribusiness Supply Chain Management System. Please, thank you. Now, can I remind everybody to switch off? your cameras and microphones while the presenter is presenting. Thank you. Can, can, can you all hear me? Yes. Okay, um, I'm going actually from Curtin University, Malaysia campus. Uh, before that, good morning to uh, all the participants. Uh, actually, um, this uh, just uh, I can say that just a uh, preliminary stage uh, compared to just now the first present presenter. Actually, just now the first presenters, uh, I think that uh, he has done uh, a lot of works already. For my actually proposal, I, I, I don't I, I don't think this is a, a called a complete proposal. This is uh, just uh, early stage of the my uh, ideas of my research works. So um the topics uh, of my uh I uh, ideas of uh, research work is related to agri business supply chain management system. So uh, I just explain it briefly. Uh, today uh, about my uh, proposed ideas. Uh, the ideas is the ideas come actually 
because uh, it is because this research is more to Malaysian context. Uh, why actually uh, I'm interested in this research? The first thing uh, actually, um, agriculture actually is one of the important um, actually uh, sectors in Malaysian economics. Uh, from the slide there, you can see that uh, in terms of percentage and also um, contribution actually in this case. But I'm also looking at, um, I found out actually uh, one of the policy, which is national cooperative policy. Actually, the government has started the cooperative movement as the fourth generator of economic growth. Services like manufacturing. That agriculture to contribute uh, 5% in 2013 and 10 percent by 2020. But however, uh, one thing that is target case. Based on uh, my uh, one even uh, one of the uh, aggressively uh, in these uh, agriculture sectors. I realized the problem, uh, even just uh, about the weaknesses of supply chain actually in this case. So uh, to this actually have a lot of uh, uh, products here, the problem that Based on my finding, a lot of ways even uh, in in Max. So uh, there's something that it's not mean that we don't uh, we don't have our resources. Actually, we have a lot of resources. But one of the problem here, based on my finding, actually is a lot of ways. And just now I mentioned that one of the reason is due to supply chain. Uh, during the uh, this uh, pandemic, COVID nineteen actually. COVID 19's uh, pandemics. Uh, during, uh, uh, because since uh, 18 of March, when the government implemented this uh, so called uh, lockdown, or here we call it as a movement control order, the situation even worse, actually, we can see that. And when I refer to some newspapers, uh, uh, reporting or some newspapers actually discuss about, uh, uh, about this issue in this case. So um, there's something must be, uh, uh, when we discuss about chain management, it should be lack of, for example, like uh, attrib uh, some attribute there in this case. So this is concerned about what we call it as a sustainable agriculture in this case. So that's why, uh, that's why my ideas, the objective of my research ideas, at least uh, to recommend uh, a systematic agribusiness agri supply chain management system. This is uh, my main uh, objective in this case. So to discuss actually about this, uh, uh, when I reviewed this uh, Kuriski HD 2015 um, supply chain management system, he highlighted start from natural resources until uh, reach to the final consumers actually. But I realized that a lot of the situation from based on the literature's uh, uh, review, uh, a lot related to distribution side here uh, from, from this side. So this is the things that uh, this uh, distribution either from the private sectors and even the government sectors. So this is a question that even we have uh, government agencies, uh, certain bodies actually still, why this is the problem in this case. That's why this must be a further analysis, further research need to be conducted in this area. So um, that's why my first idea is actually to discuss about this is more to um, um, should be a, a, a better system in this case. Either can be a system can be like eight or something like that. Start from, uh, um, for example, like if I'm a consumer, for example, I, I want to uh, have uh, certain products, for example, 
example, what a fruit or uh, vegetables, for example, like that. So how I deal with that, like this is a, a, a simple illustration from day like I used the system, uh, I search for day uh, be, before that consumer um, uh, able to uh, buy something for sure that this is uh, this supply from day go to the system. Then it's a good for then for the consumer to uh, easily uh, to go to the system to the uh, uh, to the app for example to to purchase this in this case. So in this case, uh, I I want to uh, claim for a systematic uh, like a supply chain management system. But I realized that there are quite numbers of the system actually already there. For example, even we have. Uh, Malaysia context, we even have a very successful like a platform like 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 online uh, e-commerce like Sopi, Lazada or something like that. We even have these uh, uh, e-delivery services. Uh, in this case, like bread food and uh, bread food, uh, what again, uh, food panda and, and the rest of, of this. But I'm start to think that why not this thing also apply to agriculture in this case? Seems like everybody now, uh, especially during the pandemics, then I realized that everybody, uh, even now already government start to open uh, the, uh, the borders. I think in uh, at the moment, even uh, yesterday, uh, when I read the news say that, that um, the numbers of uh, patients, for example, like COVID-19, uh, uh, like category four and five uh, started to increase maybe due to um, the government open the borders and so on like that. Maybe I, I don't know that maybe that will be uh, the second uh, lockdown or, or something like that even in in only because uh, even uh, in my state like in Sarawak even in, in Kelantan actually we are in in uh, um still in the third stage so in this case this is a thing this is a move forward to think about this system actually so to solve this uh, problem in this case so um to discuss about that, uh, there's uh, some benefit linked to the trend. For example, like more agility, uh, more sustainability in terms of that. So we can use uh, uh, blockchain and so on like that. So based on uh, data, for sure, this information go to, um, in, in for me, because I'm from marketing backgrounds, in the marketing background, uh, in marketing research, one of the very, uh, one of the important uh, element for us to continue our research to understand our consumer is data so that's why in this case we can collect all this data from the system and we try to understand this um from a consumer side and also from the farmer side in this case for sure another thing that what i can see that, uh in this uh, speed uh uh, uh of this uh, uh, um, su uh, supply chain management system in this case. So um, that's why in general, we can see that in terms of marketing for sure that we can just now I mentioned that in marketing for me actually because supply chain a lot discuss a lot in marketing for sure that we can understand consumer as perspective start from this uh, need recognition until uh, uh, post uh, even when they purchase uh, we still can study that uh, based on a post purchase uh, evaluation from day. From day, we can not just uh, put in, we can collect data more about that. So, uh, for the conclusion, yeah, actually, please. for sure that is, uh, um, we can this, uh, uh, we can create a more effective system, especially not just uh, the whole system of supply chain, but a communication system uh, in this case. I think uh, due to the time limits, I think I need to stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you. I open the, the floor for, for questions. Please, uh, Tony and Anwar. Okay, sorry. Uh, I just I just got the call from secretary from my department. Head. So, uh, Professor, I'm sorry. Uh, Could you turn on your camera? Yeah, yeah I can turn on my camera. Uh, wait a minute. Yes. So, did you get my picture? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, oh, okay. Yes. Thank you, Prof. Uh, you're from Kotin in Malaysia, yeah? Yes, Sarawak. Yes, in Sarawak. Sarawak, yes. yes. Uh, 
Okay, I I just have one question actually. Since your idea was actually created during the MCO, and now uh, Malaysia is opening, for example, 29 of November, I uh, can go to Singapore without any problem. Uh, I mean, the PCR is a must, of course. And then the, there is an agreement with Indonesia and, and, and other countries as well uh, to do this uh, vaccinated uh, tra travel lane or something like that. So uh, since your project was created during the MCO, now Malaysia is already opening. So how beneficial would this uh, project be for the government of Malaysia uh, at this time then? Can you, yeah, can you inform us please? Okay, uh, actually, uh, we just already opened, I think just around last month. I think uh, for Sarawak can, uh, for Sarawak context, I think we are a bit straight in this case. So because uh, we have, uh, compared to the rest of the state, I think uh, besides Sarawak, I think another state called South, uh, actually, we have uh, autonomy in terms of immigration. So that's why even uh, people from West Malaysia, when they come to Sarawak, they still, uh, for, even to work, for example, to study, they need to apply. So that's why uh, we are quite strict on that. So we just opened, I think, recently, I think a few weeks ago, I think. Uh, so uh, this system actually is not just about uh, after MCO, for example, like that. But the ideas come to me, yes, after, uh, during MCO, I can see that. But the keyword I, uh, for, for me from my, my plan here is about um, management system because it's what I mentioned just now that um, we can see that a lot of ways um, uh, in this case, this is related to improper management system in this case. For example, like in Sarawak itself, we have a huge, uh, uh, we are the largest state actually. We can see around that, for example, in terms of these agriculture products, for example, like recently, uh, I, I give one examples like in the rural area, for example, like fruits, for example. Um, like we have not uh, fruit like uh, very popular like durians, rambut, uh, rambutan, for example, like that. In some some of the area, like rural area, this like uh, this fruit like not fully harvested because it's too much ready. And in some of the rural area, this is uh, maybe not really uh, priceless for me in this case. So this must be, we need to do something that in terms of supply chain, so we can uh, uh, supply it to the rest of the area, rest of the state, maybe rest of the countries in this case. This is the, the, the ideas is that is, uh, uh, yes, I'm agree that this idea is uh, when I sit down there during MCO, but the most important thing to solve the problem, especially related to the waste, uh, a lot of waste actually in this case, um, uh, so that we have a proper uh, uh, this uh, supply chain management system. Okay, thank you, Prof. No other question from me. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. We have another question from Solifan Kanika, please. Okay, no question. So, Chai, do you have any collaborators for your talk? Um, that's uh, the time that we have. Thank you, Dr. Chai. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Question we can direct to Dr. Yes. Chai. Thank you. Um, Thank you very much for the uh, feedback. Yeah. Okay. Um, for our next speaker, may I invite Dr. Puja Shivanan from University of Brunei Darussalam with the title of presentation, Crop Disease Predictions and Computational Modeling. Please. Uh, Dr. Puja, can you uh, unmute your your microphone? Can't hear you.
can you hear me yes yes all right sorry about the glitch i'll i'll make that quick uh, i hope you can see my slide yes please uh, yes. Uh, good morning. Uh, sorry about the glitch. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity. And I'm Pooja Shivana, the affiliated to Faculty of Science in University Brunei Darussalam. And our project is CROP, which is CROP Research for Disease Onset and Prediction. And though I am the presenting author, we have uh, collaborators from Brunei, uh, Vietnam, Japan, India, in this project and today with me i have uh, dr rao uh, dr may khan and dr huang uh, also in this session and today i'll walk you through uh, the objective of our presentation of our project the benefits of the project what we are doing currently in our uh, university and what we propose for ASEAN ivo and how would we implement the ai and provide an ict solution before going to the conclusion so the objective of this project is to ensure regional self-sufficiency in agriculture by providing ICT enabled solutions because the pandemic has made it very imperative to be self-sufficient and self-reliant in agricultural production and also has kick-started the importance of digital technologies to ensure uh, smoother productions uh, everywhere uh, globally. But when we are designing all these uh, technologies for implementation, one of the major challenges that the agriculture sector is uh, facing currently is the crop disease, uh, where the crops are affected by uh, different pathogens that are present in the environment. So if you if the disease has a three pronged approach where you're we are currently targeting on rice. This rice is affected by pathogens like fungi and bacteria, which cause diseases and causes uh, crop damage, which is ju not just the case. The onset of this disease also depends on environmental factors like temperatures and wind velocity and rainfall, pH and everything. So it's all an interconnected uh, system that causes the disease. And we are trying to understand this better with the uh, application of technology. And the benefit that such a project would bring about would be both for the agriculture sector as well as the food where we can identify a database of crop pathogens and develop models for the benefit of farmers because they are the ones on the field and also uh, provide frameworks for policy makers which will help in decision making uh, pest management strategies and also establish collaborations and also ensure food security because a lot of crop damage is happening uh, a lot of food uh, is being destroyed and this will also help us to ensure food security which is the sustainable development goal too which is a uh, zero hunger and a uh, goal to achieve self sufficiency in the asean region to brief you a bit about the ongoing project in brunei we are focusing on rice uh, and we are studying what kind of diseases affect rice and what are the causative organisms like fungi and bacteria affecting these rice uh, species so we are collecting these uh, specimens from the agricultural fields and at the moment we are uh, doing studies on using biofertilizers and biopesticides and uh, study their germ germination indexes in a very controlled system and not in the open field uh, at the moment and to carry forward this kind of a project we have recently been awarded much funding we could save the university to start a project from January prediction specifically in rice through genomics research. Currently we are doing culture based studies and we want to do the genomics approach to understand what kind of bacteria and fungi in the bio aerosols that harbor the crop pathogens cause specific diseases. And with this grant in mind coming from our university, we will be procuring the air samplers, installing the air samplers in agri fields for collecting uh, bio aerosols and identifying the specimens and do, doing DNA barcoding and genomic analysis to get the data on crop, crop pathogens. And what we have next is we want to propose something from the ASEAN ICT virtual uh, organization where in Brunei, starting next year, we have this sample collection, metagenomics, a bit of data analysis and solutions going on. And if it all we 
we are to be funded by the ASEAN IBO Forum, we would like to carry forward this research where we will continue doing the metagenomics analysis and also with our uh, collaborators in computational sciences, we would develop basic models like crop models, weather forecast models, etc., and integrate those models to develop uh, certain solutions. The solutions will be, of course, uh, digital based, uh, perhaps an online application that could help uh, mainly farmers and the policymakers as well. So this is the flowchart of the model data model where we have the crop data. We would like to digitize it with uh, various types of data collected analyze the data uh, statistically, develop crop models, integrate the models, and then uh, use machine learning uh, to make predictions in, in, in this area of study. So we just not have, we're just understanding the diseases caused by pathogens on agricultural crops, but also the other parameters like uh, soil parameters, the wind parameters, the temperatures, the climatic conditions, how these are impacting the growth of a particular crop. For Brunei, we'll be focusing on uh, rice, and in ASEAN countries, we can extrapolate it too. And this would help us provide a roadmap where we have all this data and integrate those and pro provide a robust solutions. And ultimately, we would like to develop an application which is a digital based interface to disseminate the presence and uh, because farmers need some kind of a help because they may not really understand what is the pH or what is the days when folks selling, what is the velocity, what's the moisture content, uh, what is the onset of all these uh, pathogens possible, and how the application of fertilizers or uh, applications of pesticides for that matter. And, uh, information to individual farmers so to develop application for the benefit uh, of the farmers. So in summary, I would like to say is this project is mainly targeted on achieving self-sufficiency in agriculture, uh, starting out from identifying the crop pathogens, because while we are designing all these technology, uh, we also need to understand why agriculture is failing sometimes organisms because these organisms are also connected the, to the sources like and how their dispersion rate affects the growth for example and then uh, we develop different models and we apply ICT in the, in the form of a tangible application to provide uh, solutions so I would like to end our presentation uh, with a quote from Masanobu Fukuoka where the ultimate goal of farming is not just the growing of crops but the cultivation and perfection of human beings. So our project is ultimately aiming at uh, helping farmers, uh, helping the person on the ground, and helping policy policy makers with all the information and data and statistics that are necessary to devise uh, strategies. And definitely, this would be a, a long term project. So thank you very much for listening to the presentation. And if you have any questions, uh, you can reach me at my email. Uh, puja.shivanand at ubd.edu.bn. We also have different collaborators uh, from Brunei Darussalam from our university, uh, Dr. Rao from University Technology Brunei, uh, the other university in Brunei, Dr. May Khan from University of Tokyo, Japan, my, co my colleague Dr. Hussein Taha from my university, Dr. Sachin, uh, Professor Sachin, he is the expert in uh, climate bioaerosols. He's housed in uh, Indian Institute of Technology, Madras, and you've already listened to Dr. Hong in Vietnam. So, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Puja. Now, I open the floor. Thank you. Can I ask question? Yeah? I already raised my hand. Yeah. yeah please, I already please, raised my hand. Yeah. Anwar, oh, okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, Prof. Puja, so I, I wonder. Um, all these models you are mentioning, like um, weather model, base model, and so on, uh, are they already there, or do you want to create this model during during the project? Uh, we would like to create these models during the project because we have started off with the studying microorganisms and pathogens at the moment, and we are also mm. collecting data. 
So the more data we collect, the better it is for models. I know that, but yes, we are. How long, how long do you think you can create all these models all together? Pardon? How long do you think you can create all okay, these models the all together? Uh, this in uh, this would be definitely a long term project. Okay, uh, and we would be collecting data uh, every uh, every week, and uh, which is spanned over three months, six months, uh, a year, two years. Yeah, because depending on if you want to create the model, then you must collect the data maybe one or two years, right? Yeah, definitely. And, and depending on the funding, depending then your project on the... is over already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A uh, tool. Okay, anyway. Yeah. Uh, just my uh, point of view. Okay. okay. Thank you, Prof. Puja. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, yes. Professor Abusama. Okay, thank you. Okay, my, my question is uh, to generate, you know, to generate a sustainable community practice practices, I think the involvement of the uh, government agency or might be industry is important. So in your case, I didn't see any, you know, involvement of this uh, government agency or but good project. But I think the involvement of a government agency or industry is important for sustainable uh, practices, you know. What yeah, is your comment? I, yes, I, I totally agree with that. And that's a very useful comment. I'm sorry I did not put it on my slide because uh, it was a collaborator for ASEAN IVO. For our project that has already been given funding from a university, we have established the collaboration with Department of Agriculture and Agri-Food in Brunei Darussalam. So we have a formal collaboration with them because without their help, we wouldn't understand the ground reality, right? So our students uh, for most of the experiments also use the facility of the Department of Agriculture because they are the ones who are providing us information on crop diseases. They have something called a crop protection unit and they have this uh, database of microbes that are affecting crops especially rice and so we are we are we are working with them i would also agree that probably we need to uh, establish contacts with the farmers because uh, as you said ultimately they are the ones who will be farming and they are the ones who need help or information and we are the ones who will benefit of any real information yeah, that's that why avoid. government agencies are very important you know government agencies they are the yes. ones who are very close to the farmers yes yes so yes, uh, probably yes. next time we make a visit i will ask them if they can help us establish with the farmers. okay thank you yes. thank you any more questions hi uh, dr, dr. Puja. I'm, I'm dr Vida from ucb um, I'm basically Hello. one of the alumni, I mean, not alumni, I'm still currently doing the one of the SNIVO project 2018, where we're looking at smart watering system for paddy. So um, basically, I've been doing it for almost two years now. And more or less, um, I think you need to discuss with me uh, uh, in, in, in some way or another, because in terms of paddy, it has a life cycle. So it only goes for around 110 days. So your data is only effective for 110 days for that particular cycle. And in one year, there's only two cycles for Brunei. So the, the amount of data that you'll be collecting will be quite limited in terms of the waiting for the cycles. Mm -hmm. And it depends on where it depends on where your your um your plots are. Because in Runa we have several plots. So yes. you need to get approval for which plots you're looking into. So maybe we can actually collaborate from that point of view. Just that to would be, give you assistance here because I've been working and I'm one of the fellows for and I was mentored by people from TA anyway. I mean, from the people from Paddy experts. So that would be uh, something that could actually help you out. Dr. Vida, thank you so much for raising that. No and it would be really helpful to collaborate with you. Uh, and we welcome you to join the project if if you're willing. That would be really helpful to us as well. And at the moment, we are collaborating with the Vasan IBTE. And we have also paid some visits to Kandol. Uh, and the potted plant experiments that we are doing was like six months. As you said, uh, you're right. In a year, you can have two cycles uh, for the pathogen studies that we did in um, uh, potted plant experiment setting. We carried out for about uh, four to six months and uh, definitely water and irrigation because of paddy would be play a huge role and we would like to hear your inputs in this yeah, regard because you also yeah. need to look into quite a number of uh, variables because varieties is also playing an important role so, yeah uh, uh, it, some some varieties are already uh, resistance to present diseases so these are the things that you need to look into as well so what sort of crops that we're looking into the varieties that we're actually planting in the 
So these are things that you need to consider as well in terms of making sure that your data collected are more efficient and sufficient later on. Yeah. Thank you so much. So we sure, can, no uh, I will contact I will, you. Thank you. I will yeah. that we have sure. all the time that we have. If you have any question, you can directly um, ask uh, Dr. Pooja about this one. So our last uh, speaker for this session, right, may I invite uh, Dr. Nadia Hussein is an Abidin from University Putra, Malaysia. The title of presentation, Remote Monitoring of Harmful Algal Bloom by a Marine Toxin Biosensor in the Integrated LoRa for Food Security. Please. Uh, hi, everyone. Can you hear my voice? Yes. Hello? Yes. Okay. All right, um, so I'm gonna start. So good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. Nadia Husaini Zainal Abidin. You can just call me Nad. I'm from the Department of Computer and Communication Systems Engineering at the Faculty of Engineering, University Putra, Malaysia. My project is on remote monitoring of harmful algal bloom via marine toxin biosensor integrated LoRa for food security. Okay, so fresh oysters, clams, cockles, I love them grilled and especially dipped in some Thai sauce. But did you know that they can be toxin contaminated? This year, on October 11th, the State Fisheries Department has imposed an immediate ban on shellfish sale, harvest, and also consumption. The department advised the public not to eat shellfish obtained from the waters of Sungai Geting, Kelantan. Kelantan is a state in Malaysia. The area is suspected to be affected by something known as red tide. Now, what is red tide? Red tide is algae bloom. Now, you're wondering, algae can't be that harmful, right? Wrong. The sample analysis of the shellfish obtained from this area showed that the shellfish was contaminated with a nerve toxin. The ban is still in effect up to today, and it has been, been more than a month. Now, imagine how devastating that is for the people that rely on the shellfish industry as their means of income. So what exactly is algae bloom and why is it harmful? So we call them harmful algae bloom or HAB. Algae ranging from microscopic single-celled organisms to large seaweeds, algae are just really simple plants. But as tiny as they are, they can cause us a huge problem. Under the right conditions, they can bloom. And when they bloom, they look like this. Um, commonly known as red tide, they can either appear red or they can appear brown, foamy, cloudy, and there are many other forms of it. And once an area is afflicted by HAB, there is a high chance of recurrence. And it tends to occur in sheltered water, sheltered places uh, with restricted water movements such as lagoons, ports, and embayments. Now, HAB is not limited in Malaysia. Uh, recent massive fish mortality have been reported in Johor Strait in Malaysia, Balinaw, Philippines, and shellfish poisoning and fish poisoning has been reported as early as 1970s in Papua New Guinea, Sabah in Malaysia, Central Northern Philippines. Uh, in the 1980s, it was reported in Eastern Indonesia, Sumatra, Indonesia, and both sides of the Malay Peninsula. Now, this is a picture of massive fish die-offs. So one of the primary effects associated with HAB are contamination of drinking water, discoloration of water, smelly piles on the beaches. This is especially upsetting if you live in that area, you have a smelly environment, and if that place is a tourist attraction spot. The smelly piles can get really worse in a way that it releases gas that can irritate our lungs. And HAB has its life cycle, and as it decays, it also depletes the oxygen in the water, and this causes threat to the aquatic vegetation underneath uh, HAB can also clog the gills of the fishes and also the one that we talked about in length was contamination of shellfish. If a human consumes contaminated shellfish, the human, the person will get a paralytic shellfish poisoning and the symptoms is observed as early as 30 minutes to 60 minutes and it starts with the numbness and tinglings of the lips and tongues, extends to your fingers and your toes and causes loss in muscular coordination, uh, inability to breathe and eventually paralysis. Now, there is no antidote for HAB paralytic shellfish poisoning and the treatment is only supportive, such as artificial respiration. Now, this is something that we want to avoid at all costs because this is a near-death experience if it doesn't cause death itself. Now, what are the causes behind HAB? Uh, it is the increase in nutrients, also known as eutrophication. This can be natural generated nutrients or land-based discharges such as fertilizer runoffs, um, sewage effluent from industries and plantations, and also waste from livestock farms, and climate change caused by extreme temperature, extreme weather events such as flooding or droughts that cause 
restriction in water movement and transport by ocean going ships and coastal boats. They go to a place affected by HEB, they store the water and when they go to a new place, they release the water and HEB is now spread to the new area. And other causes include pollution, food web alterations and also water flow modifications. So the current monitoring of HAB is done by the Fisheries Biosecurity Division from the Department of Fisheries Malaysia. Sampling is done once every three months and once an algal bloom is detected, uh, it will be done once a week. Now, it still relies on the traditional methods of using microscope, which is very in labor intensive, time consuming and requires high expertise to identify the species and toxin. Now, why are we not regularly testing our waters for HEB? The reason is because our seafood culture industry is small and scattered nationwide. Um, this causes problems to regular monitoring uh, in, in terms of geographical. And also um, the industry of shellfish is not very lucrative. So doing the regular testing themselves is not an option uh, so this is this is something this this calls for us as researchers to develop a technology that can help monitor these algae blooms on the onset of the bloom okay so we cannot prevent HAB, but we can be better prepared with good monitoring and also mitigation solutions. The longer HAB is left untreated, the more severe is its effect. So this is our plan. Our plan is to remote monitor an area with possible recurrence of HAB to detect the onset of an algae bloom. So we are going to deploy biosensors integrated employed on a buoy, and the, these buoys are going to be integrated with LoRa nodules modules and which will allow asynchronous data uploading to the LoRa receiver or gateway and to the clouds and this data will be available to end users and end devices in the form of dashboards if there is data abnormality abnormality the system will alert the authorities and for fast mitigation so this biosensor will be configured to uh, collect data once a week and the data will be collected early in the morning where algal bloom is the most visible. So why are we using LoRa? Because LoRa provides long range communication up to five kilometers in urban areas and up to 30 kilometers in rural areas with good line of sight. It's best suited for IoT applications such as ourselves that require long range, low power requirements and also low bandwidth. And for places like the maricultural site that has minimal coverage and minimal communication infrastructures and requires low operational cost. Now, what are the parameters that we intend to monitor? Um, our intent to monitor chlorophyll alpha to show the abundance of algae. We intend to monitor saxitoxin, which is a common type of toxin secreted by algae. We intend to monitor spike in phosphorus, spike in nitrogen, drop in dissolved oxygen temperature, and if our funds allow for it, uh, the image of the water discoloration. So the site that we chose for our project is Kuala Gula in state of Perak. The reason why we chose this site is because in June 2020, there was a massive fish die-offs, well, which affected 20 fish, fish cages. Uh, so this is a huge loss in income and the population is made up of socioeconomic status within lower middle to poor. So this is, we really need to help them. So what are the benefits of the proposed project? This project will benefit the community where the population thrives on industry. With the times is up. Within the, uh, uh, within the lower middle. Two minutes, two minutes. Sorry? You have two minutes. Two minutes, okay, sorry. With so, so economic status within the lower middle to to have a sustainable fishery economy. Also, so increase awareness of local communities and companies of dumping land-based nutrients in water. Uh, we also want to highlight the advantage of using technology have a sustainable economy. So the low-cost remote will allow for swift action on HIV eradication, preserve the aquatic ecosystem, give us food security and safe food for consumers. And most importantly, this proposed project will use the existing monitoring water quality guidelines by the ASEAN uh, to complement the existing monitoring and management system on HAB. Um, as collaboration goes, we have uh, initiated contact with Department of Fisheries Malaysia, and we have received funding from National Instruments uh, Malaysia Brand, 
amounting to 24,000 USD. We would like to welcome uh, anyone who is interested to collaborate with us on this project because we need more insights on this, on developing this project. Um, currently, our funds allow us to develop only one prototype of biosensor integrated buoy and only one LoRa receiver. If we can secure more funding, we would like to deploy more than one biosensor integrated buoy and more than one LoRa receiver so that we can have a wider coverage of HAB monitoring and also deploy this at other maricultural sites and help more uh, shellfish industries out there. With that, I would like to thank you for your kind attention. Thank you so much. Terima kasih and arigato gozaimasu. Um, now I open for questions uh, on Dr. Tony. Okay, sorry, I, I keep asking questions, but uh, this one maybe is very important. Yeah? I mean, your system is uh, dependent on LoRa, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So, um, if there is no LoRa, you cannot use the old system. Or how how is it? If there is no LoRa, I can. Um, where LoRa is just a means to communicate the data from the right. biosensor to the to the cloud. So it, but it doesn't you, have. But to you need you need to adjust your system to the uh, communication protocol from LoRa, right? Yes, correct. Yeah. So uh, if there is only, let's say, LTE, can yeah. you use your system or, or how, how, how big is the adjustment to use the system uh, without LoRa? Okay, so actually LoRa, uh, we chose LoRa because that place doesn't have much coverage. So LTE is out of the question. So LoRa is uh, the most viable communication system. Yeah, for but most... Most uh, most places do not have LoRa. That is my concern, right? So, uh, what what do you do when there is no LoRa? Actually, the funds that we have is to erect a tower for to implement the LoRa receiver. So, we are using that funds for that. Okay. So only for one place, right? Place for now, yes. So you, so it's uh, somebody else. We have okay, okay, okay. Thanks for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll two couple small questions. Uh, first question is: uh, your harmful bloom. Uh, do you analyze what type of climate really favors the bloom? That's the first question. Climatic features does it uh, help the harmful algal bloom to glow. Second question is, uh, you said like you'll be implementing the boys. Mm -hmm. So how do you locate the exact location? What is the process of identifying the location of boys? So those two are my questions. Thank you. Thank you very much for the question. Uh, for the first question, um, actually the spike in nit nitrogen, the spike in phosphorus, the spike in temperature. So those are the parameters that we will be monitoring. And if uh, we at extreme temperatures, such as um, when we have a drought, that is when harmful algal bloom is most likely to occur. And we have seen this recently because we were having a very hot weather and algal bloom just happened out of nowhere. So the exact cause, the exact condition behind them is not fully understood. This is why we need to have like, um, hopefully in the future prediction model. Um, we, other places have done satellite imagery to capture the water discoloration. That's another method. And but my, I think in the future, the best way is to have a prediction model to, you know, to. To detect before it starts. Yeah, but this project only monitors first. Yes, this is our first step to helping the shellfish industry. For the second one, uh, we there's a several uh, locations and we have consulted the Department of Fisheries Malaysia on this. Um, they have advised us to go for either Kelantan or Pera or Joho. And Pera seems uh, like a good place because it is nearer to our university. So we can go there a lot of times and, you know, make the data collection and see if our project is doing well. And if it goes well there, hopefully we can get more funding and apply at other local coastal communities as well. So that is our first place that we will go for. So, so, so the location of Boy is not uh, as per the situation, but as per the location you're choosing it. Closeness to you. Okay, it has to be somewhere where 
are uh, there's a lot of uh, shellfish farms, uh, fish cages, um, and also places where the water movement is not um, freely flowing. So those are the places that we aim for. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I'll give a chance to others. Thank you. Um, Thank Professor Abu Salma. You have a question? Can I proceed? So, please, Alisa, please, question. Hi. Um, Alisa, yeah, Alisa from NICTIC. Just wondering, um, I think you might have answered the questions. Um, I was going to ask, like, what type of image are you going to collect for the color of the water? And I think you just mentioned about the satellite image, right? Yes. Yeah, sure. um, so, so how, how, how good is the, the image, the quality of the image that, you know, you, you're going, I mean, using the satellite image is that good enough to, you know, do some prediction out of that or, you know, monitoring out of that? Actually, the idea for satellite image is from USA. They use, um, I, I, I would think that they would use really, really good uh, satellite imageries. But for Malaysia, we don't have that yet. So this is something that we can look into the future. Okay, I'm afraid that's uh, the time that we have. Thank you for the session. If you have any questions, you can just directly go to um, you know, ask uh, Dr. Nadia. Um, okay, so we, are, we have finished our session. Um, but uh, before we go on to the next session, we will have a five minute break. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Haji Abdul and uh, uh, all speakers.